Hey everybody, uh, this is Abby from The Real Tea. Do you wanna know what to expect, uh, to expect when you get in a home inspection? If so, stay tuned. We're gonna learn more about that later on. Welcome to The Real Tea, uh, my weekly segment where I spill the tea on what's happening in the real estate market. And today I'm here with Rick Galloway, owner of Galloway Construction and A Complete Environmental Home Inspection. Hey Rick, how you doing today? Hello. I have my tea here, so we'll be ready to go today. <laughs> do you have your tea? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for being on the show today, and I'm, I'm really excited to hear about your insight uh, to let our audience know a little bit more about what to expect when they go into a home inspection and maybe give us some tips on what um, home buyers can do and home sellers can do uh, previous to having the home inspection done. So. Okay. Um, one thing for a seller, it's a very good idea to do a pre-inspection. Uh, okay. That way you can find out anything that may be an issue to sell your home. And then you can get that corrected prior to your showings. Um, that, that's a very good idea that uh, something that um, most realtors will um, go over with, with the prospective seller. Okay. And it really helps to progress the sale. Yeah, definitely. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, your business, um, your home inspection business, to start off the show, just to get our audience acquainted with you and who you are and who you're here representing today. Okay. Yes, I started off um, in construction. That's where my background comes. Okay. Um, that sets me off a little, a little bit from some of the other inspectors. Um, my background is in mainly residential insurance restoration work. So I worked hand in hand with insurance companies and banks, um, did basically did inspections for them to determine what needed to be done to get the house back to where it should be. And it was just a nice, easy progression to go into the actual inspections for sales. Um, so approximately seven years ago, I, uh, decided to go into inspection for sales. I uh, enrolled at Hondros College uh, to get some form of a background other than my my general construction background. So we did that. And then uh, at the time, Ohio did not have any licensing. So I took it upon myself to go to North Carolina and get licensed there. Uh, so I'm actually licensed in four states now, including Ohio, since Ohio now has licensing. Do yeah. you specifically target... Um, sellers or are you more so in the market of targeting targeting other real estate agents how where do you get a lot of your business from um i i do um obviously i work hand in hand with the real estate agents okay. um but it is the the buyer that has the final say okay. um, um i have uh, pamphlets um set up at different offices and then uh, a buyer will go through generally make uh, three to four phone calls and then make a decision based on uh, price and who they they feel is going to best fit their needs. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's great. Um, so going over, you know, about obviously the whole home inspection process. Uh, so as a home inspector, you go in there, you know, you are uh, representing the um, buyer, the seller. So what exactly is the process? Uh, where do you start in the home inspection and what should the uh, people that are getting the home inspection expect at the end? Uh, are you expected to uh, cover everything, all the major issues such as the HVAC systems, or are you expected to catch a lot of the minor details as well? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, yes, um, our report uh, has things listed as um, what would be considered major defects, minor okay. defects, and also things just to monitor, which would be more of your very minor things, but just to have something in mind that this could affect one person and maybe not another, such as um, it is a, a rule that above three steps, you need a handrail. I will sometimes put in, if there are two steps and there is no handrail, I will put in that there isn't because some people may require that and others would not. So um, the summary is the, the best page uh, to utilize because it has everything listed in that order and you can start at the top, see the, the most pertinent down to the, to the least. Okay. Uh, so when you like, go through, obviously, um, you know, you have to cover all those bases. Um, I know that uh, obviously 
some things aren't caught. So when you're going through the home, do you have to catch things such as like, what if the water in the uh, is switched? So hot is cold, cool is hot. Are you expected to catch that? Um, that is not something that we would always catch because we're only there for a short period of time, generally anywhere from an hour and a half to three and a half hours, depending on the shape of the house and um, the size, obviously. So we may not catch everything that is um, pertaining to things like that, but our biggest job is to find things that are unsafe or that could cost you a tremendous amount of money. That's okay. what I feel my job is. Okay, what are some examples of um, things that you would, you know, change in a home inspection or put on the summary report? Right. Um, when we start, um, I start with the exterior. I go okay. uh, do all of the grounds. Uh, if you have a shed, an outbuilding, anything like that, we actually inspect those as well. Okay. Um, I access the roof if it is accessible. I'll actually get up and walk on it, um, take a look at the chimney, um, judge the, the roofing itself. Um, then from that, we'll move into the garage, we'll inspect the garage, and then we'll go room by room and basically go from floor to ceiling. And then we end up in the uh, basement and attic areas. Um, that's generally where um, more of the meat of the inspection comes in to play okay. because yeah. all, most of your mechanicals are generally in the basement or the attic. By mechanicals, I mean the furnace, um, your electric panel, those types of things, which um, you know could potentially cost a larger amount of money to repair if it's not yeah. caught in the inspection. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and that is great that you do that, but Aside from that, um, obviously you are, you know, you do the inspections for a real estate purpose when people are buying or selling their homes. What is the typical uh, way that the, the transactions happen? Does the buyer uh, pay for the inspection or does the seller? I know you mentioned previously in the show that um, you uh, recommend a pre-inspection, but when it comes down to it, who is the person that is paying for that or does it depend? Um, generally speaking, it is the uh, buyer that pays okay. for it. They're the ones that hire me and then they own the report. I will only share that with people they would want that shared with. Um, if they request that I send that to their agent, I will send it to their agent. If they, in, in the future, once they get into negotiations, they would like me to share that with the seller, I can do that. Uh, okay. Generally, though, it just goes to the buyer and their agent. Um, okay. If it is a pre-inspection, the seller then pays for it. And what um, I have noticed is if the home sells within six months of the inspection, quite often the buyers will accept that inspection. And it just helps to expedite the process. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously, because you said that um, you recommend a pre-inspection, what are some um, things that sellers can do prior to having that pre-inspection? Um, are there a little, are there any uh, minor things that they could do throughout the home that you would look at? I know that you said you do a lot of majors such as shed, roof, garage, the basement, the HVAC, but is there anything else that you usually catch that maybe could be done prior to the inspection that can be um, out, done out of the way? Uh, one of the, the biggest things we generally find at a pre-inspection are GFCIs, uh, which are the push button receptacles, which have to be anywhere within six feet of a water source, all of the exterior uh, outbuildings and garages. Uh, okay. That and uh, quite often we will find fungal growth, um, which is just a nice way of saying mold, in okay. attics and basements. Um, water leaks into the basements. Those are some things that um, that we generally catch on a pre-inspection that the seller can then address um, and take care of prior to um, buyers coming in. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for letting our audience know that because I know a lot of our audience base is really interested in real estate and uh, what they could do. And it's really educational for them to know also since, you know, the market's really hot right now. So I'm yeah. assuming you've been pretty busy this, yeah. this summer. So, yeah. 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 Both construction as well as the inspections. Yeah. Well, we're really going to spill the tea here, Rick. So you, you better get your, your tea ready because we're going to be spilling it. I got a note from a colleague they want to know what the strangest thing you've ever seen in an inspection is. <laughs> Personally, the strangest thing I have found is a light switch in a shower. 
uh, extremely unsafe. Um, obviously, it, the house did not come equipped with a shower. They made it a shower and left the light switch inside. So that's probably the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, that's not good. That yeah. is definitely strange that that would be in the yeah. shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously there's a lot of like weird things that happen like that with the house and just the built of it. Um, at, from your experience, obviously, I know that you are a major part of the real estate transaction process. But from your opinion, what you've been seeing, how often do deals and transactions go south after the inspection is done? Um. To be honest, it depends on how bad the person wants it. Um, I've had some clients who, before the inspection starts, will say, don't make this sound too bad so the bank won't lend me the money. Um, that's not how I operate. I'm going to give them a full report uh, whether they they want to hear the bad news or not. Because uh, over overall, that's, that's what I need to do. So it, maybe it isn't the right home for them, and the next one might be. So yeah. Um, uh, I do not try to squash a deal. I don't feel that that's my job. I mean, I'm sure I could go into any home and I can make it sound horrible, but mm -hmm. I, I don't try to do that. I yeah. will let my client know um, if I see something that would keep me from purchasing and tell them, you know, if I was going to purchase this, I would want this corrected prior, but I do not go out of my way to make it sound bad. Yeah, and, and that I feel like that's half the battle is figuring out which inspection agency to go with. And obviously you seem like you're very honest and you know you're there to do a job and you're there to help both sides and you know tell the truth, tell your truth and tell the truth of the home. So that's definitely right, yeah. great. That yeah, but my background in construction lets me know what to look for. You know, I didn't yeah. have to be taught when I went to schooling for inspections on what to look for. I needed to be taught on what kind of format they wanted and what's the best thing for my client. But I already had the background, you know, I know where to go, what to look for. And, you know, I, I can somewhat judge, you know, the potential hazard of whatever I find. Yeah. Definitely. And that's really good that you have that background too. So that definitely helps and, you know, it makes your job a little bit easier and you're very educated on that. So um, anything else that you want to tell our audience before we close today? Um, no, right now it is um, it, the, the market is extremely hot. If, if you, if, if you are serious about purchasing um, uh, you, you need to, to strike quick because yeah. what I've, what I have noticed is homes are selling within a day to a week. So you yeah. really have to jump on it. And um, it isn't a bad idea even to contact an inspector prior um, just to let them know, hey, I'm looking at maybe purchasing. You know, could you get me tentatively on the schedule for next week? Um, because you only have a certain amount of time after your initial offer to get your inspection performed. Yeah, definitely. And I think that that is the a big plus in this market today, you know, it's really fast moving and there's multiple offers. And like you said, uh, houses are going off the market after a week, even a couple of days. So on one side, being pre-approved when you're a buyer, on the other side, getting pre-inspected if you're, you're a seller, seller, definitely two major things that you should be doing to make sure you get the dream home that you want. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so to close the show, um, I'm definitely going to put your website in the description on businessjournaldaily.com and definitely in the comments um, on Facebook. We actually have um, some people commenting on it, so with more questions. And all the real estate agents watching, definitely try Rick out. I know that you are in the field and you do great, so um, definitely it will be awesome to you know have that going as well. So we are going to end the show today, and thank you so much, Rick, for being on. It was great right, having you. Thank you for sharing your insights. Um, very knowledgeable. And I am looking forward to working with you in the future as well. Um, I know that we have something planned for maybe um, sometime in the fall. I definitely want to walk through an inspection with you, um, you know, so we can actually see visually uh, what's going, you know, what happens in an inspection. So when people, you know, get one, uh, they're not shocked and they're not, you know, they already know. They're already educated. So does that sound good, Rick? That would be great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I'm looking forward to talking to you, talking with you later. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Rick. Bye.